Hi everyone and welcome to a long overdue update on compression tools available to you in Adobe Audition. In my first video that came out many years ago, I talked about dynamics processing, hard limiter, and normalize, and those tools are still worthwhile. I recommended at the time dynamics processing because it really trained your ear into the use of uh, compression tools. Uh, and there's still actually a really good reason to use dynamics processing that I will get to in another video. But uh, I'd also like to thank everybody who has viewed that video and who subscribed to this channel. It was really, really kind of interesting to see all those numbers rise up quite so fast. As we get into the use of compression tools, it's really sort of important that we take a look at this. And this is called an ADSR envelope. If you're familiar with synthesis uh, and generating sounds, you'll be familiar with this as well. But this is how sound works naturally. Most sounds have this kind of envelope applied to it naturally. And the attack time is how long it takes the sound to go from zero to its loudest point. And then decay is how long it takes to get from its loudest point to its natural sustaining level. How long it takes to become the normal part of the sound and how loud that sustain level is. And then the release time is how long it takes the sound from when it kind of naturally ends to when it goes back down to zero. And we're going to use compression tools to modify this uh, ADSR sound envelope more to our liking. So perhaps uh, the difference between the loudest point and the sustain level isn't quite as great. So we have a much more even level. Perhaps the attack time will happen much faster. So we get to the loudest point faster and the release point would happen much quicker. But we will get into those as we go. Of course, all compression tools can be found in the effects menu under amplitude and compression. There you will find dynamics processing, hard limiter and normalize as I've already talked about. And then there are other tools here that really uh, are kind of basic and we're not necessarily going to go into in great detail. Amplify just makes your audio louder or quieter. It's the exact same thing that happens here with your heads up volume control. The channel mixer is great if you've uh, got two parts of a conversation, one panned to either side, you can pan them back to the middle. You can copy the left channel to the right channel if there's um, uh, a glitch in it. So good tool, absolutely go back to it. DSer eliminates and compresses uh, specific frequencies. So if somebody is excessively sibilant, you may wish to use the de -esser. It's really a harsh tool, so I don't use it that much. The fade envelope allows you to apply a fade kind of anywhere on your audio. This is more than just using the fade boxes here at, at the beginning and, and at the end. Here you could apply a fade on the middle part of the audio. So if I if I close that and highlight it and go back to fade envelope, it would only be in the area I highlight. So great little tool, absolutely use it a lot. And then uh, in context with that, you would have the gain envelope, which applies a specific gain that you can write in in a specific part of, of your audio file. And then we get into some of the other compression type tools. So the, the first one here is um, a really good one, not dynamics processing, but actual dynamics. This is this is a new module that's built into Audition. And what it does, it really emulates a hardware uh, compressor and it breaks it down into various parts that you may or may not need on each individual part of your audio file. So each one you go through, you have to turn on with this little box and we'll go through them kind of one by one send audio back to home so we can start at the beginning and the first one we should talk about is the gate auto gate this is also known as a noise gate and what it does it's like a really smart on off switch so you set where the threshold is 
and any audio that falls below that threshold point, the noise gate turns the channel off. Any audio that falls above the threshold point, it turns the channel on. So this is handy if you have a really noisy audio file that has pauses throughout. You can use the noise gate and it will automatically mute those noisy sections where nothing's happening. So let's first take a quick listen to the beginning of this audio file. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simply stunning. Now it's time to roll up your sleeves and work on the exterior garden design. So nothing wrong with this file. It's not particularly noisy. Yes, I would agree. I probably recorded this a little bit low. And again, I could use normalize to increase that, but I will skip that step for now. So I'm gonna turn on auto gate. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design. And you can see here, you've got three lights. The red is below threshold. The uh, yellow is sort of right at the threshold point and green is above threshold. And maybe you notice just a little bit in there, it was kind of cutting off the beginning of words and phrases. Let me play that one more time. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simply stunning. So perhaps I've got that threshold set a little high, so I'll just click on it and then bring it down a little Congratulations bit. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simply stunning. Now it's time to roll up your sleeves and work on the exterior garden design. Uh-oh, not up to speed on the gardening stuff? So that's better. I dropped the threshold down to about minus 33 dB. So any audio that fell below that, it would turn the channel off. And I think that's, that's probably pretty close. There's also a couple of extra controls here. The attack in this case is how fast it turns the channel on. And the release is how slowly it turns the channel off, how fast it grabs onto the audio and how slowly it releases it. So handy tool, quite like that. I might turn that down just a little bit more. And now if I had a noisy atmosphere, if there were noise happening in the background, whenever there was a gap where the voice wasn't covering up that sound, this would automatically turn the channel off. Great. So now I've gotten rid of my background. Now let's bring in a compressor. Now a compressor takes your loud sounds and makes them not quite so loud. It changes the dynamic range. The dynamic range is the difference between the loudest point in your audio file and the quietest point. That's your dynamic range. It shrinks that down. It shrinks your audio, the output of your audio file based on the input of your audio file. And here we have five controls, just like you would find in a hardware compressor, starting with the threshold. The threshold is where compression starts. If you think about it, how do you get into a house? If you get into a house, you have to go through a door. As you go through the doorway into the house, you cross the threshold. So you cross the threshold point, you go into the house. In audio, you cross the threshold point, you start squishing down your audio. How much you squish it down is based on the ratio control. So if our audio was going to go up 3 dB at a certain point, if we use a 3 to 1 ratio, so here I've got a three to one ratio. Instead of letting it go up three dB, I'm only letting it go up one, B, one dB. I'm taking the loudest points and shrinking them down. You have two other controls here, attack and release. And the same is here. The attack is how fast the compressor module grabs hold of your audio and starts shrinking it down. I like super fast attack times. I like 0.5 milliseconds for voice. I want the compressor to grab a hold of that voice as fast as it can and start squishing it down. I want the release 
to also happen relatively quickly, but not as fast as the attack. In this case, 50 milliseconds. For voice and voiceover, those are my chosen attack and release times. If you're doing music, perhaps you would want um, a longer time there. So if you're uh, putting compression on a bass track and the bass is being played by a pick, maybe you'd want to keep the attack of that note with the pick a little bit more natural and have a longer attack time. So this is something you have to kind of tune and get used to. Uh, if you set these too fast, it can sort of sound like your audio starts vibrating. So if you add up your attack, your attack and release times, and it's somewhere around 30 or, or 25 milliseconds, you may hear your audio start vibrating a little bit as it's constantly being grabbed by attack and released very, very fast. Maybe you want that release time to go on longer and longer so the, the sound level stays kind of, of compressed longer. I like my compression on my voice and voiceovers to sound really natural. So I don't have huge compression ratios or really long attack and release times. I try and keep it fairly natural sounding just with a more consistent level. Last control here is called makeup. This is also output gain. So when you take an audio file and squish it down with compression, your levels are going to drop quite significantly. So you have to make up the gain you just threw away and add it back in with makeup or output gain. So that brings your loudest point back to a much more consistent level. And it also makes your quiet sounds not quite so quiet. So you have then shrunk the dynamic range quite significantly. So on, on this track, I've got the noise gate going. I'm going to add the compressor and as it plays through, I'm going to sort of tune it and, and sort of see where things are happening. This metering here is called gain reduction. So normally an input gain meter would go uh, left to right. In this case, gain reduction is going to go right to left, showing you how much compression you are really adding. So let's, uh, let's give this a play and, and sort of see where we end up. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simply stunning. Now it's time to roll up your sleeves and work on the exterior garden design. Uh-oh, not up to speed on the gardening stuff? If you need some gardening 101, get it at Richie's Garden Center. Sign up for Richie's seminars. Everything from spring gardening to-dos, annual and perennial containers, lawn care, and shade gardening to bulbs and houseplants. So what I did as I was going through that, I sort of adjusted the threshold point. So where I could hear that the sound was, the voice was sounding a little bit more compressed. And I, I touched around with the ratio just a little bit. I don't like a ton of compression. I like a moderate amount. So I could see on the meter here how much I was dropping those loud points down. And you notice I had to use a fairly significant amount of makeup gain to make the original channel louder, but to make the compressed channel, uh, compressed audio much higher here on my meters. In fact, I went too far and, and had to drop it back down a bit. So these controls are interactive. If I add if I drop the threshold down earlier, so if I took this down to minus 30, it would mean I'm compressing more of the signal, so I would have to use even more makeup gain. If I raised the threshold up higher, I wouldn't need quite as much because I'm not taking the loud parts and shrinking them down. But the ratio figures in there too. If I use a lower ratio, I'm not compressing it quite as hard and I'll need less makeup gain. If I use a higher right ratio, I'm squishing it quite severely and I will need more makeup gain. So you have to constantly adjust this. You have to make sure you're getting the right sound. So I can turn this on and off and hear the difference in my compression. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simply stunning. Now it's time to roll up your sleeves and work on the exterior garden design. Uh-oh, not up to speed on the gardening stuff? If you need some gardening 101, get it at Richie's Garden Center. 
So still sounding relatively natural in a commercial sense with this. If I was putting this over music, it would sit quite nicely above the music. I'd be able to hear everything separately, yet still contain, maintain a, a really consistent output level. So that's auto gate and compression. And this again, looks exactly like a hardware compressor. Expander is like a compressor in reverse. So here in compressor, where it hits the threshold point, it starts squishing the audio down, everything that's above the threshold. In expander, everything below the threshold gets amplified. I don't like it. I don't use it. It doesn't sound natural to me, but please, uh, feel free to experiment on your own. So again, uh, the expander, you set the threshold point and you set the ratio of what you want and it amplifies signals below your threshold point. And I find that sounds extremely unnatural and not at all what I'm going for. Lastly, we have limiter. And limiter is just like the hard limiter. This saves you a step uh, of going to another processor module. It does everything in one. So this is this is cool having having it here. So what I want with hard limiter, in this case limiter, is I'm going to set my threshold point. What am I going to set my threshold point to? Well, I'm going to set it below zero because if I set it above zero, it's, I'm going to peak on my meters. That's not what I want. I want to keep everything below zero. So it's going to find the threshold point that I set and it's going to cut off everything above that threshold point. This is why it's called a brick wall or a hard limiter in the other module. It's saying here is the point I'm going to set the loudest audio to. And as long as the audio is below that threshold point, nothing's going to happen. If suddenly a peak goes w above the threshold point, it says, no, you can't go that loud and it blocks it. So it actually trims it off. Like a, it's kind of like a hedge trimmer, right? If you've ever seen a perfectly trimmed hedge, it's square and flat. What a hard limiter does is it trims off those peaks. So as I play this through, depending on where I set the threshold, you're going to see the limit light come on. And that means it's cutting off peaks from your audio. The release time is again, is how fast it releases the audio once it comes back under that threshold point. So let's play this again. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simply stunning. Now it's time to roll up your sleeves and work on the exterior garden design. Uh-oh, not up to speed on the gardening stuff? If you need some Gardening 101, get it at Richie's Garden Center. Sign up for Richie's seminars. Everything from spring gardening to-dos, annual and perennial containers, lawn care, and shade gardening to bulbs and houseplants. So you can see setting my limiter to minus 3.7 on the meters meant it only went to minus 3.7. That's as loud as it was ever going to get. I could add more makeup gain and, and turn this up so my level was always going to be closer to zero. Um, and, and that just trims it off. So it keeps everything in one module. If I'm using the dynamics module, that's the way I set it up. I find my noise gate or my auto gate that gets rid of the bottom end of my voice part. The compressor sets the dynamic range and I use the meters to see how much makeup gain I need. Again, I don't personally use expander. If you like it, knock yourself out. And then hard limiter just to trim off stray peaks. And then if I process this file, it's going to go from this small little file, apply it there, a much more consistent audio level. And again, I could go through it with the hard limiter and just set it lower and trim off those stray peaks. I still have a little bit of dynamic range in my audio file. It's going to work quite nicely in a commercial voiceover sense. Still sounding very natural, maybe a little bit punchier, but if I'm using this on music with the vocalist, maybe I'm going to use even more compression on that. So when they really lean into something, it doesn't really overload my levels. 
So Dynamics, not Dynamics Processing, really nice little module, kind of like that. The next one is Single Band Compressor. And this one is, is your typical Adobe layout and it has the same things as the compressor module in the dynamics module. So what's the difference though? It's got a threshold ratio, attack, release, and output gain. What it doesn't have is any sort of metering. You have no idea how much um, compression you are actually adding. You can only hear it and you look at it. For that very reason, I don't use this. I need a little bit more reference as to what I'm doing with this and single band compressor does not, uh, does not give me that. I'm doing this totally blind, totally by ear. Yes, I trust my ears, but I need a little bit more of a reference to really understand on what's going on here. The one thing that's really cool is you do have up to five second release time. So it's really gonna hang on to your audio and really make it very smooth going through. But this is not one I am going to use. Another one I am not ever going to use is Speech Volume Leveler. Speech Volume Leveler is kind of an automatic compressor uh, that doesn't give you as much control of stuff. It really, it's based on the presets here, strong, medium, careful, soft, and it changes based on those presets. So you can see here with the strong preset, it's got the threshold at minus nine dB and it's got a 15 dB noise offset on a noise gate. I don't really understand what these settings do. Target volume level is minus 18 dB. Why would I want my minus 18 dB as my target volume level? I want stuff closer to zero. How much I'm going to level it? 100%. So that's adding more compression to stuff. This is, uh, I, I think, kind of designed for uh, beginners and podcasters and, and people who are sort of just starting out in audio and want something really simple. They want the audio to be strong. So if I applied that preset, you can see my levels are still kind of low, but they're more consistent. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simple. I, I kind of know what I'm doing and, and I would like Adobe to sort of let go of my ears and let me know, let me just do what I know I'm doing. So if I put careful on that, careful, it's not leveling it as much. The volume level is, remains the same. Target dynamic range, it wants to keep 80 dB between the peak loudest point and, and the quietest point. It's using almost no compression. When I apply that, it kind of looks the same, just a little bit louder. Again, I don't really see the reason for this very, very much. I kind of would stay away from that as far as I can. The other one though, the tube modeled compressor. Now this one, I, I really, really like. So the tube model compressor has all the controls again from the dynamic uh, dynamics module threshold where compression starts. Uh, it's called output gain here, but it's the same as makeup gain, our ratio, our attack time and a release time. The only difference is over here, it has an input meter. There is a gain reduction meter and a slider that controls our threshold point. And I really, really like this. This was originally designed for Adobe based on requests for an optical compressor and was built by a company called Isotope. Uh, and it's been around since Audition 3.0. And I really, really like this. I've been using it kind of nonstop since 2007. So if I take my original audio file again, what I can do as it plays, I can see how loud the input level is and where I'm going to put that threshold control in relation to my input level and see how much gain reduction I get. So this is 
nicely interactive and makes sense for my brain. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The Output colors, gain. the furniture, the interior design. Output gain too loud. So let me turn that down. Congratulations on so your new home. See. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior. The threshold is above the loudest point of the input gain. So let's turn the threshold down. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simply stunning. Now and as I move the threshold slider down in relation to the input gain, I bring more gain reduction in. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the obviously way too much. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simply stunning. Now the ratio here, five to one, that's a little little much for my, my tastes. 16 to one would be worse. So let's go back to the three to one is kind of the standard starting point for me on compression ratio. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture. Much more natural sounding now. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simply stunning. So now I've got something that's really lowering my, uh, giving me a gain reduction over 6 dB, but still sounding very, very natural. Congratulations on your new home. It looks great. The colors, the furniture, the interior design, simply stunning. Now it's time to roll up your sleeves and work on the exterior garden design. Uh-oh, not up to speed on the gardening stuff? If you need some gardening 101, get it at Richie's Garden Center. Sign up for Richie's seminars. Everything from spring gardening to-dos, annual and perennial containers, lawn care, and shade gardening to bulbs and house. So by using my compression ratio and my output or makeup gain in con conjunction with setting the threshold point very quickly i have changed what is uh, an under recorded audio file recorded far too low i have changed the dynamic um, relationship the dynamic range of that audio file so all of a sudden the loud parts aren't so loud and using output or makeup gain i've raised the level so that now all of a sudden i'm going to have a really super consistent level within about one or two db of zero so this is going to be great to go over any kind of music bed and use in a creative advertising sense so I can just apply that and you can see I've got one peak that is probably going to light up my over lights. Uh, but the rest of the levels are ex very consistent right up close to zero. So it's going to be a nice loud audio file and the drop offs to the quiet points are only about 3 dB. So it's still going to sound natural. The loud parts aren't going to be too loud. The quiet parts aren't going to get lost in whatever background I put in with that. I would take this and I might run it through a hard limiter or normalize just to get rid of those peaks. But that might be the, the audio file. That might be the processing I would use on that. I might add some EQ to that. But that might, that might be all. So that's a quick look at some of the more advanced tools you're going to use in Adobe Audition to control dynamics. Now, there is one more that I haven't shown you on this. And let me just undo that. And let me show you multiband compressor. So again, if we look at the tube modeled compressor, we've got input a threshold control slider, gain reduction, output or makeup gain, uh, compression ratio, attack and release. And that covers the entire audio file. Audio file. But when I look at multiband compressor, bring it over from my other screen, what this is, is four compressors happening at the same time, separated by frequency. So I've got one here in the low frequencies with a crossover at 120, the mid frequencies with a crossover at 2000 Hertz, the high frequencies with a crossover at 10K, and then the ultra highs going the rest of the audible spectrum. 
And again, it's the same compressor, one, two, three, four, with input, threshold control, and gain reduction. The only changes here, we have solo and bypass. So we can bypass certain frequencies of compression. This also has a built-in limiter that I can set as a brick wall limiter. Here's the thing. For voice, I think this is overkill. Voice is going to go anywhere from, you know, 100 hertz for a James Earl Jones deep bassy male voice to perhaps starting at 200 hertz for a Kathleen Turner type female voice. Uh, other female voices might start as high as 300 hertz. Why do I have to worry about compressing audio that where there's no audio? and then have different compression levels on my uh, mid frequencies, high frequencies and ultra frequencies. It's a little bit of an overkill. The reason you would use a, a multiband compressor is the same reason every radio station in the world and every TV station in the world uses these. You can fine tune the overall sound of your broadcast station. So I might use a multiband compressor I might use it in a multi-track session on my mixer. Let me set up a multi-track session. So if I'm going to have multiple files, might have music beds, sound effects, voiceover. On my mixer here, uh, I might put a multi-band compressor because I'm dealing with the entire range of frequency spectrum but it's like mastering your music and then sending it to a mastering engineer to put out on cd or vinyl you only have to do it once and if you're paying somebody else to master it or if you're paying somebody else to broadcast it they're going to have their own specific audio settings that they use it might be music dependent it might be voice dependent it's going to depend on how it's transmitted if it's over the air or through cable or uh through the uh internet as a uh as a download this is too much this is this is overkill that said i do know of producers who like some of the presets here. So is it worth your time to investigate? Absolutely. Do I think it's too much for all of my compression needs? Absolutely. But you experiment with it, you like it, you can change the relationship of these frequencies. So if you're working in music and you want to bring up the overall uh, lower level you can just go to that specific uh, frequency band you want and increase the gain control and then all of a sudden your just your lows are going to come up whereas your mids uh, highs and ultra highs are going to stay the same you can adjust your crossover points just by clicking on them i could move that low frequency to 200 as from 120 and you can see how the line jumps to separate the frequencies Four bands is, is kind of low in a broadcast sense. Most of them would have six or eight bands. But I think this is sort of a great introduction to multiband compressor. And again, it just takes four of them happening at the same time over four different frequencies. I'm not sure how phase aligned it, this is, if it's going to introduce some phase uh, coloration. I, too much for me. Right? Too much for me, so I don't I don't use it, but certainly it's it's something you should investigate in terms of putting on your output bus of your mix sessions. So those are the advanced compression tools built into Adobe Audition. I really like Dynamics. I think it's very good. I love the tube model compressor. Like I said, I've been using it for well over a decade. I think it's fantastic. It's right up there with my favorite compressors of all time. Speech level, uh, speech volume leveler and single band compressor, I really don't have time for. I think they're flawed tools and I really can't recommend that anybody uses them. Still a use for hard limiter. 
absolutely still a use for hard limiter. You might put it on top of, of something that's already been compressed. And as I said, there is still a use for dynamics processing. And I will get to that in an upcoming video. Dynamics processing, I will give you a hint, dynamics processing is the only tool built into Audition that will do a certain type of compression. And that's why it should and is still remains part of your Audition toolbox. Dynamics uh, compression and changing dynamic range of an audio file. Uh, an important, a, a base skill to master. It's going to make everything you put it through sound better. And it's up to you to balance those sounds and use these tools properly. Thanks.